Hey everyone, my name is Sydney and welcome to Peaceful Planting. So this is my very first video where I am talking and I am showing my face and the pressure is real. If you have a YouTube or you have shown your face, you know what that very first video feels like and the pressure is on. Anyway, so I attempted to make a nice background for you all. This is um, one of my plant shelves and it has a lot of my plants on it. I currently have 90 plants, which I have acquired over the past not even a year. Um, which it happens very quickly if you if you fall in love with house plants um, you 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 know how quickly your collection will grow uh, I want to point out that this behind me this painting of this older gentleman is Einstein you can't see the whole whole painting but that is Einstein it's not just some creepy strange older gentleman on my wall just to give you guys a heads up, I thought that would be helpful. Anyway, so out of my 90 plants, I chose for you for my very first video, uh, my favorite three plants, which I hope kind of introduces myself and you know what I like and my love for plants. Um, it was very hard to choose three plants. I wanted to put about 10 to 20 on this table right here, but obviously that would be a little overwhelming. So, um, uh, let me start off with, these are all aeroids. All three of these plants are aeroids, and I won't go into the care too much for them, but what I will say is that each and every one of these three plants are in a very well-draining, airy soil mix. You know if you have aeroids, they like a lot of airflow, they like good, bright, and direct light, and they love a good, well-draining soil mix. So in all of these plants I have, a mix that I would say is probably <clears throat> two-fourths orchid bark, one-fourth perlite, and one-fourth soil, which of course that differs. So don't take that as a prescription to how to keep your aeroids happy. Mine are loving it, but it depends on the conditions that you have. What is your airflow like? What is your lighting like? Um, you know, and things like that. And do you have it in a terracotta pot? Do you have it in a plastic or a ceramic? So really, you're gonna have to go based off of what you have your plants in, the conditions that your home offers that plant. So that is what mix works for me. I let them dry out, I water them, I use a water meter. I got really tired of sticking my finger in the soil of 90 plants to see if it was wet um, or moist or if I needed to water. So I just, I just got myself a water meter and it works phenomenally you have a large collection, I would really highly recommend getting a water meter. It saves you a lot of time and energy and dirty fingernails. So anyway, um, all of these aeroids that I will show you are in bright and direct light. I know we hear that a lot in the houseplant community. Um, it's very hard to describe what type of lighting, for me personally, it is so difficult for me. But what I will say is that each and every one of these plants is uh, between three to five feet away from three different windows. So it's south, northeast, and west facing window. Um, and I also do have grow lights. So if you notice that or you feel like you're not getting a lot of light, grow lights are phenomenal. They have really helped my plants thrive. And of course, you know, with winter time, which is our least favorite time in the houseplant community, because our plants are like th wanting to thrive and they can't because of these light conditions and the gloominess. But anyway, so I found that the grow lights really do help. So those are the conditions that I have these plants in. They're all getting airflow from, um, you know, my fan in my living room and things like that. So. Anyway, I will start off with the most common plant, um, which I do have some common plants. I have some uncommon plants. Um, you know, it really, I, I don't care if they're common or uncommon. What I care about is, you know, do I love that plant? You know, does that plant bring me joy? And I just pick up whatever brings me joy, which is, I, I think that's how it should be. You know, if you find yourself wanting to go for these rare, um, uncommon, super expensive plants, you might get that plant and realize 
you don't love it as much, but it's part of the craze, right? So I try to stray away from that and really stick to what my heart tells me and what plants bring me joy because that's why I'm doing this. That's why I have my houseplant collection is to bring myself joy, you know, self-care. Anyway, this is the most common plant out of the three that I have here, not out of my collection, but um, this beauty right here is the Syndapsis pictus. So I have heard this plant be called the Skindapsis, um, Silvery and Pothos, I think. I'm not a fan of Skindapsis. I don't know if it's just the skin in there, a little creepy to me, whatever, whatever works for you. Syndapsis it just sounds really pretty and very elegant, which this plant is, I think. So I happened to find this at Home Depot. I was probably picking up pots or soil, you know, the usual houseplant parent run to the store. Um, I walked by this plant and I've seen this plant in videos, but you don't really capture this plant's beauty and the shimmer on this variegation until you see it in real life. It's it's unbelievable. I just think it's beautiful. And I have this right on my coffee table so that I can see, because that's where I spend most of my time is on the couch studying or watching TV, you know, just hanging out. And I have it on my coffee table so that I can see it all the time. So um, the variegation is that silver shimmer, like unbelievable. I can't believe that a house plant can shine like that. It's just, it's gorgeous. Okay, I'll stop myself. So the back of these leaves is like a really pale green. And in the light, when the light is shining through this plant, I can't even, it's beautiful. And the back actually does have some shimmer on it as well. And the front is this dark green, as you can see. The leaves are very succulent-like. So they're um, a little thicker than most like thinner leaved house plants. You'll, you'll be able to tell once you feel it, which showed me that this plant can hold on to a good bit of water. Um, so I do let this plant dry out relatively well before I water it. Uh, so I use my water meter. I couldn't tell you if it's one time a week or, you know, however often, because I just do it based off of when the soil is dry. And that kind of tells me that the plant needs more water. And also the leaves will start to curl. Of course, I just watered this like two days ago. So, but the leaves will start to curl up and that's like a sure telltale sign that this plant needs water. And then it perks right back up and you're fine. You didn't kill your plant, you're good. Um, but when I got it, I did not have this vine that you see here. Okay, so I had just what's in that pot right there, like this whole section. Um, and I noticed it was vining, and I know these are shingling plants. I try to do a lot of research on my plants before I get them because killing plants is just, it's, it's so sad. So anyway, definitely don't want to kill any of my plants. So I do a lot of research, and I know that this plant is a shingling plant. So if you give it something flat to grow up on and to vine on, it will lay its leaves flat on whatever you gave it, like usually a piece of wood, and it is beautiful. I am not a fan of just sticking a plank of wood in my plants because I do have this on display. So put it on the moss pole and it still will vine up it. The nodes will grow roots and it'll, you know, go into the moss. I made this moss pole. Um, I went moss pole crazy the other night. So I made a whole bunch of moss poles and I, I'll, I'll, if you are interested, let me know. I will do a video on how to make the moss poles because it's super simple, super affordable. You don't have to buy one of those ugly net ones on Amazon, I'm not a fan of those. I don't think they would look good in my home. So I made this and it's very natural looking to me. Um, anyway, so Syndaxis pictus, such a beautiful plant. All right, now we're gonna get into the more rare, uncommon, I would say difficult to find, expensive, rare, uncommon, whatever you wanna call it. This is my Raphidophora tetrasperma. All right, there is some debate in the houseplant community. Um, if you watch YouTube, if you are really involved in the houseplant community, you know 
there's the tissue culture, and then there's like the regular Raphidophora tetrasperma. Some people call it Raphidophora tetrasperma. I like Raphidophora, whatever you prefer. It's, it's a Raphidophora one way or another, you know, it's the same plant. So however you want to say it, but there is the tissue culture one. Um, Becca Della Plants on YouTube actually just posted a video, I want to say yesterday, and she was doing all the houseplant debates and things like that. Great video, Becca. Good job. Um, so she did mention this about the tissue culture, and I completely agree with her. You know, it does not bother me that this plant is a tissue culture one, and I don't even know if it really is. It, it probably is. I got this plant for $5. You heard me right. Five dollars. Um, and when I got it, it only had these four leaves. So these two and these two. And a node about a stem about this big with a node right in the center and one very long root. So I took it, was petrified of root rot, stem rot. So I put it in that airy mix that I mentioned in the video earlier in the video. And I put it in a terracotta, very small terracotta pot because I don't want this plant to um, have that root rot or stem runs be sitting in water. So the terracotta really helps absorb out some of that water. I would rather water this plant two times a week, which I typically do, than have it be in a, you know, not well draining soil and rot. So out of fear, I did everything I can to um, prevent root rot and stem rot. So anyway, I will show you right here. That is the Raphidophora tetrasperma, probably tissue culture. I don't know, but either way, doesn't bother me. I have these three new beautiful leaves. Um, this one's a little funky, which the plant is funky in general, which is why I love it. But I don't know if you can see that. This one's like very round and um, just funny looking, but it was the first leaf that had grown from the propagation. And you know, you never know what you're gonna get, you know, with your first leaf after a propagation. But anyway, I also made a moss pole for this one. Um, and I love this plant. If you happen to find this plant and it's a tissue culture one, from what I understand, as they age, as they mature, they grow into the same Raphidophora tetrasperma that we all know and love. You know, and if you love the fenestrations and you love the funky look of this aeroid, then, you know, I would recommend getting the tissue culture because I, I love it just as much, you know. And for $5, I'm, I'm not going to pass up this plant at all, ever, for $5. So that is my Raphidophora tetrasperma. Tissue culture, maybe, hmm, doesn't bother me. I just love the fenestrations on it. It's so funky. All right. I saved the best for last. This is my ultimate true love plant. No matter how many plants I get, this plant remains my favorite. Like, I baby this plant. It even has a little, like, metal flower thing in it. I just, I love this plant. Anyway, so... This is my philodendron radiatum. Aww. It's beautiful. I love it. All right. So this pot is huge. So if it's shaking, I'm so sorry. But okay. So this plant right here, I don't know what it is about it. I just love it. Don't know if it's the thick petioles. And I also don't know if I will find next year, 2020. Don't know if I will find another plant that I love more. Maybe it's possible. So far, I have not. Um, my favorite out of my entire 90 plant collection. And it's growing a new little leaf, which is just the cutest thing to me. Um, and this is that a new leaf that grew, just came in probably I'd say about three weeks ago. It's just so cute to me. But anyway, this plant is thriving. I know it's kind of, you can probably tell that it's growing towards the light right here. It's bending the petiole a little bit. And um, I'm assuming it, it did not do that in the summertime. So I'm assuming that it's just because it's wintertime, you know, things are shifting, seasons are changing. It's trying to get a lot of light. It does have a grow light behind it. 
Um, but despite all of that, it, like I said, it's growing new growth right here. Um, I don't have moss around this pole. This is just twine, which, you know, I'll probably do a video and put some moss on that just to show everyone how easy it is to make moss poles at home. Uh, anyway, so the disappointing thing about this plant is that I have heard and seen in pictures that as it matures, the leaf shape changes. And of course it gets, the leaves get larger. Um, and at that point I might, you know, cut it back and just keep these immature leaves because they just make my heart so happy. But anyway, so we'll see what happens. Who knows? I might like the mature leaves too. Not sure. Um, okay. Well, that is it. If you all have any of these plants and you love them as much as I do, let me know in the comments below, or if you have a favorite plant or three favorite plants, um, let me know in the comments below and tell me what you think about the video. Let me know if you're interested in, you know, a moss pole video. I would love to show you all how easy it is to make those at home and how affordable it is. So, okay, well that is it and that's all I have to show you for my first video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are on Instagram, please follow so you can keep up with my content. Um, and if you're on YouTube, please be sure to like, subscribe, like the video if you like it. Um, subscribe if you want to see more content from me and to the right there's a little bell icon when you subscribe if you click that you will get updates and notifications on the new content that I'm putting out there so thank you all so much for watching